Hey folks, I uh, wanted to do a quick little educational or informative video for you today. Um, I had a little bit of time after work and I haven't really been out fishing this week at all between the winds, just being busy with a few other things and some of the reports I've been hearing. Uh, I just haven't been able to make it out on the water. And so today I figured we could cover a different topic, uh, something that's very relevant for this time of year and it's a very important thing to track if you don't do it already. Uh, what I'm referring to is what's called the thermocline we're going to talk about the thermocline today, why it's important, why you should be paying attention to it, and a couple ways uh, that you can stay on top of where that thermocline is in the water column week to week. All right, so let's jump into it. Okay, so what do I mean when I say or I talk about the thermocline? Uh, what the thermocline really is, is it's a, a portion in the water column where the water temperature drops drastically from being very warm to very cold in a very short um, amount of space. Uh, so I want you to picture a cross section of Lake Michigan um, and I'll put a picture up here if I can remember but I want you to picture a cross section of the lake and I want you to picture it in three different parts. You're gonna have your your top third of the lake and that's gonna be your warmest water. That's the water that's being actively heated by the sun. It's exposed to the ambient air temperature each day uh, so that's gonna be your warmest water. Then I want you to go all the way to the bottom, the bottom third of that that's going to be your coldest water and then right in between there's going to be a layer of water where the warm meets the cold and this is what we refer to as the thermocline and the reason I'm bringing it up today is because the thermocline it doesn't set up until typically early June it's all kind of dependent on the ambient air temperature if it's a warm season or a colder season um, but lately I've been noticing that a thermocline is starting to set up and so I figured it'd be a good time to talk about it um, now the thermocline, for us guys in Milwaukee that are fishing Lake Michigan, the thermocline typically exists anywhere from the end of May, early June, and it usually stick, sticks around all the way until September when the air temperature starts to get cooler again. Uh, and so there's a few reasons why we want to know where this thermocline is in the water column, um, because it's going to help improve your fishing by a whole lot. So why is the thermocline important to us fishermen? Well, the thermocline holds the alewives, it holds the bait fish, uh, for a couple different reasons, which I'll go into here in just a second. But if you can find the thermocline in the water column, you know where to put, run your baits because that's where the bait fish are and that's where the kings and the coho and all the predatory fish are also gonna be. All right, so let's go into why the thermocline is a good habitat for alewives to be. Uh, so the first and like foremost is that the thermocline creates the perfect temperature for plankton to grow. And the plankton are what these AOIs are actually actively feeding on, what's keeping them alive. So the first reason is that the thermocline sets up a, a perfect environment for these plankton, and those AOIs are actively feeding in those zones. Uh, the next thing is that the thermocline typically is some of the most nutrient rich, but also it's got high oxygen content in the water. And so it's a perfect habitat for these AOIs. And then lastly, um, being in the thermocline gives the alewives kind of a competitive advantage against some of these predatory fish. I don't know if it's because there's there's currents or just plenty of places for them to swim, but for whatever reason, these alewives have a competitive advantage from the predators if they stay in this area of the thermocline. All right, so there's kind of three reasons why those alewives are there. And if the alewives are there, you can bet that feeding salmon are gonna be there as well. And if you know where those feeding salmon are in relation to that thermocline, then you can run all of your baits in, at, or near that mark in the water column, and you'll know that you're in productive water. Okay, now that we know why the thermocline is important and why it's holding fish, the next question becomes, how do we find a thermocline? The thermocline can kind of shift. It all is dependent on the wind. It's dependent on the air temperatures. Um, at some, you know, some days the thermocline is going to be way up in the water column, like 30 feet down, and other days it's going to be, you know, 60 feet down, and it might be 60 feet down in Milwaukee and it might be 40 feet down in Sheboygan. It's gonna differ and you need to stay on top of that as a fisherman to understand where the most productive water is going to be for your boat on that given day. Uh, so we have a couple different options uh, right now. Uh, there's a couple different brands that, that create like a temperature and a speed probe that goes on your downrigger that actively tells you the temperature of the water at that position in the water column. So the two main competitors that I know of are Fishhawk and Depth Raider. Um, 
I'm not necessarily biased. I run a depth rater because it was what I grew up using and what I know how to use. But at the end of the day, no matter which brand you go with, the important thing is, is that that temperature probe that you put on your down rater can tell you the temperature of the water at different areas in the water column. Okay, so when you first get out in the morning and you're just starting to set up, before you even put a line in the water, I recommend that you put that down rigger with the temperature probe down in the water and slowly let it just sink down and pay attention to the temperature on your graph, all right? Because the graph up front on your boat that, that might just be picking up the temperature at the surface of the water is not what's important. The temperature that's important is the temperature of the water where your baits are gonna be running. So as you're lowering that probe, you know, you're, this time of year, you're gonna see 59 degrees, 58 degrees, 57 degrees, but eventually you're gonna hit that thermocline and you're gonna see a drop from 56, 57 degrees, all the way down to maybe like 45, and it's gonna be like this. So that's how you know you found the thermocline. And at that point, if that number's you know, 40, 50, 60 feet down, you know that that thermocline is at that point in the water column. So if you find that number at, at 50, if that temperature drops right at 50 feet, then maybe you wanna run your 10 colors that day. Maybe you wanna put the five colors away because it's gonna to be too high in the water column. It's gonna be in water that's just way too warm for the bait and most likely the salmon aren't gonna be there. All right, um, so this right here, this right here, I'll actually show you a little bit closer. This is an example of a temperature probe. This is Depth Raider's model. The fish hawk is uh, transparent. It looks a little bit different, but the bottom line is, is that you're gonna have a clip on top here. It's gonna clip on to your down rear cable. And then on the other side, you're gonna clip on your, your weight down here and you're gonna send this down in the water column. And this is gonna allow you to figure out where that temperature gradient exists. All right, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you have questions about the thermocline or if you have additional insight on this, uh, please drop it in the comment section below. If this video was helpful for you at all, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, and I'm hoping to come out with some more content here, some salmon trolling content in the next couple weeks. The weather's starting to look a little bit better for next week, and I'll certainly be filming a series during the Salmonorama. Uh, so I'm looking forward to making that stuff uh, with you guys, and I'll see you next time.